Welcome, everybody. Lon McCarron along with Mike Sawyer. Our ISKA kickboxing cameras are in Toronto, Canada for this title fight. Conrad Pla going to his corner on the right. There is Chad Sawyer in the white pants. Three wins, no losses. This is a Canadian title, the light cruiserweight division. Conrad Pla is the Canadian champion, and he is a man we've seen a number of times on ISKA kickboxing. Mike? Yeah, Conrad Pla, also the uh, North American champion in the light heavyweight division. This is moving up to light cruiserweight, going for the Canadian title. In this division, this is full contact fighting, all kicks above the waist, no elbows, no knees, no leg kicks. Every knockdown rule is in effect, and the standing eight count rule is in effect as well. Just underway, scheduled for eight rounds. We've seen a number of different strategies fighters do employ over 12 rounds, trying to start out quickly in the fight, quickly. Other fighters we've seen, like a man like Paul Biafor, for instance, who would start slowly, try to use up that energy in a very measured way through 12 rounds. These two fighters feeling each other out in round one. A little more active than most first rounds we see of bouts this length. Those fighters seeming to want to impress the judges early. Nice display of kicking technique by Chad Sawyer. Seems to be very flexible. Nice speed on those high kicks. Snapped in a right hook as well that Claw felt. Do Canadian fighters have any tendencies that are unique to Canadian fighters that you've seen? More use of the hands or the feet? Most Canadian fighters are straight ahead type guys. They'll, uh, they'll come with the low, low front kicks to the body, low angle roundhouse kicks. We sort of call it the Jean-Yves Terrio School of Kickboxing. That is the end of round one. Conrad Pla and there Chad Sawyer back to their corners. And this is somewhat what I mean. Straight in type fighting. Uh, I, I say the Jean-Yves Terrio School. He is the most famous Canadian kickboxer of all time out of Quebec province. Held world title in the light heavyweight division for many years. Made famous in kickboxing a combination of strong hand techniques in combination with low angle roundhouses and roundhouse kicks straight up the middle. A Canadian title is on the line in light cruiserweight division. Chad Sawyer in the white pants and Conrad Claw in the black pants. It is Claw's title to lose at this point. So far, Chad Sawyer, the more active fighter, has landed more than Claw. Neither fighter hurt to this point, but a lot of hard leather and foot gear being thrown in there. Chad saw you're a fast riser in this kickboxing world. Just three fights and no losses under his belt and already fighting for the Canadian title. He has shown some good stuff in his previous three fights and he's showing Conrad Paul why he deserves his title shot. Chad, to go. Chad Sawyer getting an early shot here. Conrad Blas is the veteran. 12 years of fighting under his belt. Mouthpiece came out. Chad Sawyer gets it cleaned off and put back in. Round two. When to go, Chad? When to go? Blah taking the aggressor role in the latter part of this round. One thing that Blah must be noticing 
is how Chad Sawyer drops his hands after hand combinations or while he's kicking. For a veteran like Pla, that's valuable information. Conrad Pla just noticed both gloves of Chad Sawyer right on his nose. A couple of good punches. ISKA Kickboxing on ESPN is brought to you by Black Belt Magazine, featuring comprehensive coverage of the martial arts. And by MedEx, the top of the line in fitness and rehabilitation equipment. In this day and age, crime and violence is right behind you. You can fight back with self-defense, and the best source is Black Belt Magazine, the world's leading magazine of self-defense. Learn how to defend yourself with fully illustrated in-depth articles, interviews with martial arts celebrities, plus trends and current events. Go with the best. Black Belt. To subscribe today, call 1-800-57-KARATE. Order now and you'll receive your choice of a free Black Belt t-shirt or watch. That's 1-800-57-KARATE. Okay, Gretzky, it's just you and me. Let's see what you got. Pass to Gretzky. Shoot! Score! Lucky shot. Score! Gretzky! <laughs> He's really making himself look bad tonight. Grace checking. Come on. Didn't you see that? Throw him in the box. Gretzky 98 3D hockey. As real as it gets without racing up. Saw that one. Gretzky just blasted. Coming in over the blue line. We were on vacation. Oh, your sunglasses. When we realized we were sitting on a gold mine. Rubber sunglasses. Too bad none of the stores saw it that way. So, any more bright ideas? Actually, yes. I can see clear. Our own website. And before we knew it, we were selling shades to everyone under the sun. Open a storefront on the internet with the most powerful network in the world. These days, we could all use more endurance. Say about 24 hours worth. I know I could. And now I've got it. Because now the odor fighters and new high endurance deodorant last even longer. New High Endurance lasts a full 24 hours. No one else is this strong, this long. Plus, it's got this new Pure Sports scent. So now you can smell better, longer. Guaranteed. Or call 1-800-PROVE-IT and Old Spice will buy you a stick of yours. Hey, no matter what you're into, now you've got all the endurance you need. A full 24 hours. Guaranteed. Back in Toronto for round three. Conrad Flaw in the black. They call him the Batman. Going against Chad Sawyer. Six to go. Six. Box him in. Six to go. Six to go. Yeah. Got him. Got him. Yeah. going back to his waiting role now. Four to go. First half of the first round. This is what he did. Is just wait for Chad Sawyer. Four to go. Four to go. Three to go. And up. Cut. Again. Round two with Sawyers. Flaw seems to be waiting again for the younger fighter. I don't think that's a good strategy. Well, a strong champion and a veteran of kickboxing wars knows how to dish out its energy, knows when to use it up, knows how long the fuse is. The younger guys, like Sawyer, were just 3-0, and may not know how to gauge his strength through a long fight. Chad Sawyer seems to be laying back, or I'm, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Conrad Plaw seems to be laying back in the hopes that Sawyer will tire a little bit, but I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen. These young fighters are in tremendous condition. Probably fight the whole fight exactly as he is now as the aggressor. Sawyer showing that aggressiveness. Big miss by Plaw. Effectively countered by Sawyer. A flaw on the attack now. Yeah, yeah. capitalizing now on the fact that Sawyer drops those hands, holds them low to begin with, but after he punches, they just seem to automatically go down to his belt. So, the young Chad Sawyer may be too aggressive, the veteran Claw knowing how to handle that aggressiveness very effectively. Get to the front, 
Judge Sawyer getting some final instruction before coming out for round four. But what a great experience for such a young fighter to be, to be fighting in a title bout this early in his career. Well, he's young enough. If he doesn't make it this time, he'll get another shot. But I'm sure that's not what he's thinking now. These fighters psych themselves up. When they step in the ring, they believe there's no way that they can lose, that they are the best in the sport. I'm sure both of these men feel like they will come out as victors. That is part of the manager's and corner's job is to boost that fighter, always giving him that mental edge that you need when you get in against another fighter of the same or greater strength. You can see the inexperience in, in Chad Sawyer. He's, he's not pacing himself. That probably won't harm him because he's in such good shape. But the way he drops his hands in between punches, can't help but think that Claw is going to capitalize out on that heavily sometime during this fight. So Sawyer's head snapped back from a left from Conrad Claw. He's in trouble in the corner. Claw measuring his shot, scoring well with uppercuts. Sawyer survives that barrage from Conrad Block. Not unscathed, though. I think it took something out of him. Several real sharp uppercuts on the chin. Just makes your head buzz for the remainder of the round. Sawyer seems to be having trouble with his nose. Going to his nose a lot with his left glove. I'm sure he took a couple of punches straight on the button. Oh, very accurate punches now by Pla. Going up to the head, then down to the ribs. Landed three or four uh, very well-placed punches in that exchange. Well, Sawyer's going to have to learn not to get trapped in the corner. That might be the biggest lesson he takes away from this fight. Pla daring Sawyer now to try to hit him. Husky Tools. Innovative solutions from the Home Depot. The problem, ordinary screwdrivers can't always deliver the power or control you need. The Husky solution, the Husky torque driver with four times the turn. Chad Sawyer in the white pants, the contender against Conrad Plaw, the champion. They are fighting for the light cruiserweight division of Canada. Conrad Plaw looks much the more veteran experienced fighter so far Mike Sawyer he showed it just then with a well placed right leg roundhouse kick up up to the side of the head of Chad Sawyer we'll make note that Chad Sawyer is no relation to you Mike Sawyer as far as we know well, let's wait and see if he wins <laughs> I like the strategy that Pla is utilizing now He's letting Sawyer throw a few punches. He's watching carefully to see when those hands drop. Paul's even a, a, willing to accept a few light punches to wait for that opportunity, and he's scoring well with counters. You see that Chad Sawyer now throwing punches when he's not quite on balance. He's backing up when he's moving forward. He's not setting himself and throwing the punch. You're certainly not going to get as much body and muscle into the punches when you're doing that. That right hand stays very low for Chad Sawyer. Looks like he keeps it down to protect his midsection from front kicks. Against a fighter like Pla, that could be a, a fight-ending mistake. At any time, the flock comes over top with a left hook or a left roundhouse kick. Give credit to Chad Sawyer, though. He is very active. He's moving forward most of the time against this champion fighter, Conrad Flaw. He catches Flaw with a right. Very active round for Chad Sawyer. Conrad Pla, what, do you want to go to the wrong corner? <laughs> well, he's the one that has to take a walk at the end of that one. Chad Sawyer came back very well at the end of that round. That roundhouse kick 
with a slightly low. Chad Sawyer came back. I thought it was Plaz round, but I don't know. I think that Chad Sawyer may have pulled that out right at the end. He certainly did impress upon the judges. He has something left. I think Conrad Pla was hoping that Sawyer would punch himself out in this fight. And though he did look a little tired in the previous round, round five was a good one. Now into round six. I would think Pla is going to pick up things a little bit here. He can't afford to be behind on the judges' scorecards if this goes the distance. Particularly as he is the more experienced and the more accurate fighter. Now, if I were Pla, I would be faking the front kick low and going up top. But Sawyer is blocking with both hands when he blocks those front kicks down low, leaving his head completely unprotected. And remember, Conrad Pla does have knockout power. Again, Sawyer, the fighter, moving forward. Conrad Blah having to be a defensive fighter, but also a counter-puncher, counter-kicker. That seems to be where he is strongest in this fight. But Pla, oddly enough, looks slightly confused, like he's not really sure what kind of attack to, uh, to lead with uh, when he goes after Sawyer. Almost like he's just playing it, just winging it, playing it by ear, getting close and looking at what's open. He might be surprised. He might have expected Sawyer to be fading by this part of the fight, but here in the sixth round, near the end of the sixth round, Chad Sawyer looks strong. He's still bouncing around, maybe not as much snap in his punches, but he's still there. Actually, Conrad Flaw is the one who looks to be breathing a little heavy. We'll be back. Welcome back to ISKA Kickboxing. Lon McCarron and Mike Sawyer. The ISKA cameras are in Toronto, Canada for this Canadian title fight in the light cruiserweight division. Conrad Pla in the black trunks has the title. Chad Sawyer is trying to take it from him. The question here, Lon, is whether the strength, speed, and stamina of the younger Chad Sawyer will win out over the veteran Conrad Pla. Seemed to be in the September of his fighting career, but has held this Canadian, has uh, held the light, light heavyweight Canadian title for some time and the North American title. Now moving up in weight, fighting for the light cruiserweight Canadian title in full contact. Sawyer still with a lot of snap on those punches. The action has not been in the middle of the ring very often tonight. Pla now, the one moving forward. You see Pla, though, closing the distance without throwing punches out ahead of his movement. He still looks a little unsure what he wants to do when he gets close to Chad Sawyer. And that kind of hesitation leads to what we just saw. A nice left, left lead hook by Chad Sawyer. Had he another three or four years experience, he'd be putting these into combinations that may have taken Pla down by now. Well, no matter what happens in this fight, I don't think we have seen the last of this matchup. I like the looks of Chad Sawyer, Lon. He's got strong, fast techniques, even if they're not put together into sophisticated combinations. Well, very interesting round. I, I have to think that Pla maybe has misjudged the strength and stamina of Chad Sawyer, though Chad Sawyer maybe wouldn't tell you that. He's sucking wind big time in his corner. Uh, he has just stayed so active and thrown everything at, at Conrad Pla. 
This is round eight. Come on, Todd. Eight to go. 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 And once again, it's Sawyer, the aggressor. I like Chad Sawyer's attitude. He seems to be absolutely fearless in there. There really is something to be admired about a fighter that if he's going to lose, he's going to go down fighting. Each fighter taking punishment. Oh, a good roundhouse left kick from Sawyer after Flaw went and turned his back on his opponent. Chad Sawyer still looking very impressive in here. With his inexperience as a professional fighter, he was not expected to, to be this much into the fight at this point. Expected that Claw would have a big lead or taking him out by now. Claw now is looking like the tired fighter. Oh, roundhouse kick to the jaw. Claw shaking his head no, but that scored well. The only thing that saved Claw on that was the fact that Chad Sawyer was falling backwards as he threw the kick. No, but not on that one. That one scored well. Left roundhouse kick to the head. But again, the inexperience of Chad Sawyer not following it up with hand combinations as he should. Coming down to the final seconds of this bout. Chad Sawyer shows that he earned this title fight with good credentials. He has given Conrad Flaw, the defending champion, everything he can handle and maybe more. And that is the end of this eight-rounder. Conrad Flaw and Chad Sawyer have much more respect for each other than they did before this fight began. I would say the outcome of this one is still very much up in the air, Lon. Action from the last round. Chad Sawyer all the way to the end, capitalizing on those mistakes by Conrad Plaw. Mistakes we wouldn't expect from someone of his level. It is once again a unanimous decision. The blue corner, Chad Sawyer. And a surprise in Toronto. The youngster Chad Sawyer dethroning Conrad Plaw and a unanimous decision in the light cruiserweight title fight. We'd also like to acknowledge and congratulate ISKA world champions in tournament fighting and forms from the U.S. Open World Sport Karate Championships in Orlando, Florida. Every year in the summertime, the best in tournament karate worldwide meet down in Orlando to fight for these ISKA world titles in the tournament sport karate divisions. This year, over 1,500 competitors appeared in Orlando, Florida. The best from Europe, Asia, the Pacific, North America. And these people crossing your screen right now came out on top. Back with more in a moment. When it comes Fight to scheduled for 10 rounds. The vacant North American super welterweight title is on the line. Melvin Murray in the white stripe and black pants going against Curtis Bush in the all black trunks on the left of your screen. Both fighters showing no shyness as we open up this 10-rounder. Melvin Murray, known as a very aggressive fighter. He's not afraid of anybody from Nova Scotia. And he barrels down Curtis Bush. No knockdown. Murray very proud of his native Indian heritage. Curtis Bush, one of the most experienced fighters that we see in ISK kickboxing, fighting since 1979. Record of 40 wins, 8 losses, 2 draws, 29 knockouts for Curtis Bush. And the man is still in terrific shape, Mike Sawyer. After fighting so many years, I'm sure he knows how to get in shape for a fight, and he comes in looking very trim. 
called the explosive thin man because he's tall and thin, has fought most of his career at around 150 pounds. This bout at 153. Uh, Curtis Bush held the world title in this super welterweight division at 153 until May of this year when he lost that title in Littleport, England to Mark Weller. Bush says this is his last fight at 153. He just feels like he can't hold that weight anymore. He'll move up to the next higher division up to 159 pounds after this bout. See here, the kick judge is judging those kicks. Both fighters required to throw eight legal kicks per round. The end of round one, Curtis Bush, very experienced fighter. I'm sure he's probably looking forward to a pizza or two after this, <laughs> moving up to the next weight class. Melvin Murray also holds a title in this weight class, in the middleweight class. This is super welterweight. As we begin round two, scheduled for 10. As fighters age, it becomes more difficult for them to maintain those lower weights. Their basal metabolic rates are just not high enough to keep the, to uh, support the uh, calorie consumption. That's not just fighters, Mike. <laughs> I tell you, all of us. But Bush has lasted at those weights longer than most. Vicious straight right from Melvin Murray. Very aggressive Melvin Murray in this, in this fight for a, looking at a 10 rounder, he's expending a lot of energy early on. Bush working with his trademark right leg sidekick, trying to keep Murray away. Murray just pushing Bush around the ring. Bush landed with those side kicks, but missing a lot also. He needs a little more slide on his supporting foot. Close the distance with Murray and those side kicks. Murray with a couple of good front kicks underneath. Surprisingly active for a second round is Melvin Murray. Two down, eight to go. Melvin Murray has been taking the fight to Curtis Bush so far in the first two rounds. Now we begin round three. Bush with a nice side kick to the face, a little broken rhythm on that kick. Bush has landed well with his kicks in the first two rounds, but Murray has just overwhelmed him with aggressiveness and certainly has gotten the judges nod, I would think, in, the, in these first two stanzas. Bush needs to pick up the pace or he'll find himself way behind going into these middle rounds. Well, the experienced fighter Bush, I'm sure, knows how to pace himself. I'm also pretty sure we can expect more action from him in these coming rounds. Oh, nice two-punch combination by Bush. Very accurate with that straight left and right hook. Bush also is a pro boxer. One of the few kickboxers who, uh, who endeavor to cross over into both sports. Melvin Murray is deadly accurate with his kicks. Going very well, particularly the straight kicks up the middle. I would think that Bush's boxing experience would help him in the clinches as well. Good morning, elbow. Watch the elbow. Let's go. 
Well, when Bush has stood in there and traded with Murray, Bush has gotten the better of the exchanges. It's just Curtis Bush always starts slow. But he's used to 12-round world title fights. In 10-rounders, he's got two less rounds to start slow in. He needs to show his stuff earlier on. So again, Melvin Murray, very active. Curtis Bush wondering which corner he's going to go to, does find his own. Hey, inside on these punching combinations, generally Bush has gotten the better of Murray. Bush punching deceptively hard. He's tall and thin, but he gets a lot of hip rotation, upper body torque in those punches. 29 knockdown, uh, knockouts out of his uh, 50 fights. Melvin Murray anxious to get it on. Round four now. Comes out quick. Bush has also won most of his boxing matches by knockout. Generally later round with two and three punch combinations. Bush starting to land some techniques. Well, if I was Melvin Murray's corner, I would tell him to continue to do what he's doing. If he allows Bush to set him up as this fight moves into the into the middle rounds, Bush is more accurate and hits harder with his techniques. If Murray allows himself to be set up, Bush is going to change the tempo of this fight dramatically. Murray connecting. Murray doing all the right things now. Keeping Bush off balance, staying on top of him. One more! Saw the timing of that kick by Murray on the counter kick. Just as Bush is bringing his leg down, Murray goes forward. Murray is doing a good job of making Bush miss also with the jabs and the straight lefts. Moving his head just slightly to the side. Bush is catching mostly air. Bush felt that roundhouse to the ribs. Murray catching most of those on the gloves. We are through four rounds. Back with more in a moment. Curtis Bush looking at Melvin Murray as a very, very able opponent. Melvin Murray has shown very good so far through four rounds. Well, look at determination on Curtis Bush's fight, uh, face before this round started, but he's going to have to do more than just have that look. He's going to have to get busy with some kicks and punches. At this point, Melvin Murray all over him, and I'm sure way ahead on the judges' scorecards. Melvin Murray wants to be, as we've seen time and time again, Curtis Bush getting the best in those clinches. Murray has been successful keeping his distance from the explosive thin man. Murray's at his best, closing the distance with punch-kick combinations and then moving back outside. Exactly what he did there. Bush with, with no counter punches, no follow-ups. Well, oh, good right hand by Murray. One of his best punches of the fight so far. Well, the boxer in his other life, Curtis Bush, is losing the boxing match right now to Melvin Murray.
Break. Step back, please. The end of round five, and Melvin Murray is not letting up. Curtis Bush has a big puzzle to solve. Well, Bush has got to shift his strategy at this point. He doesn't have that many more rounds left. He's allowing Murray to close on him every time and then dictate uh, whether the action is going to continue inside or he moves out. Bush can't afford to spend time and energy with kicks like the one you just saw. Uh, a little double roundhouse kick that did nothing but maybe show his flexibility and expertise. But he needs to build up points. He needs to land some hard shots on Melvin Murray. Slow him down some and press the judges. This is a title fight for the vacant North American super welterweight belt. Scheduled for 10 rounds. Bush still inexplicably allowing Murray to set the tone and pace of this fight. You got him. You got him. Melvin Murray has a huge gas tank, Mike. He is relentless. He hasn't slowed down a bit since the first round. But Bush must know that he's losing points on the judges' scorecards with, with every combination that Murray lands on, on the attack. Good right from Bush. Good right hand followed a three-punch body combination. Interestingly, Murray has not body punched at all in this bout, preferring to kick to the body and punch solely to the head. Great toe-to-toe -to -toe action from Toronto. Bush walked into that front kick. Great fight. More after this. Melvin Murray on the left of your screen and Curtis Bush have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe the last few rounds. Melvin Murray, though, started out quick and he's not let up at all. Got a spinning back fist attempt that landed with the elbow to the top of Curtis Bush's head. Referee taking a point away from Melvin Murray. No warnings for spinning back fists that land with the elbow. It's an automatic one point deduction on the very first time that it happened. That could be a decisive point in this fight. Judges using the modified 10-point must system. Winning fighter gets 10 points in each round. Losing fighter, nine and a half or fewer. Bush has just got to get, got to get busier, Lon. There's not enough going on. Taking too many shots. There you see five techniques on that charge by Melvin Murray. Murray has Bush's right hand trapped. It's on the other side of his body. The referee could not see it. It'll draw a warning if the referee does see it. So Curtis Bush goes back on the right of your screen. And you say he has to do more. Curtis Bush is giving away too many rounds in this fight. He doesn't have 
too many more rounds to go. Letting Melvin Murray dictate the pace of this fight has not served Curtis Bush well. Melvin Murray has not gotten tired. That spinning back fist attempt landed on top of Bush's head. Fortunately, had it landed on the face, it may have cut him. Bush had ducked the spinning back fist, and that's the only thing that saved him from a cut on the front of his face. Round eight, scheduled for 10. Now, here again, I don't understand Curtis Bush not taking the aggressor role. He's a very experienced fighter, hits very hard, can do anything, any kicks with his feet, has very sophisticated hand combinations, and none of it matters. The other fighter is the active one all the time. Well, even a novice fan of boxing or kickboxing has to know when somebody goes this hard as Melvin Murray has through seven rounds, they're bound to tire. And maybe Curtis Bush is feeling that as well. But so far, Murray has shown no signs of letting up. Well, these flurries by Bush now are, are the only real activity by him at a Curtis Bush level, at least, that we've seen in the last three or four rounds. Good right hand by Melvin Murray. Now it's Bush looking fatigued. Bush covering up. You see Bush wave his foot out and then cover up as Murray comes forward. Not the sign of a real confident fighter this late in a bout. Right there is where Bush should be taking command. Moving in when Murray backs off. Coming underneath with hard kicks and then using those hand combinations up top. That's the end of round eight. Ready for round nine, scheduled for 10 rounds, Melvin Murray on the left of your screen, the black pants and the white stripe, going against Curtis Bush. Good double kick by Curtis Bush. No real damage, but showed off his flexibility. You were faulting Curtis Bush for not being as active as you think he should have been. I'm sure that is just exaggerated now. He needs to be even more active in these final rounds. Well, he's only got now three minutes of fighting to show the judges that he should be the champion. This is a vacant title. He doesn't gain the advantage of being a champion and has to have the title taken from him. He's not given the benefit of the doubt just because of his stature and his record. He has to show that he can dominate Melvin Murray, and it's a little late to do that with points. He's going to have to show it with a knockdown or a knockout. Well, that brings back an earlier point we discussed, how this is Curtis Bush's last fight in this weight class. Did he have to work too hard, train too much, wear himself down too much to get to this weight, and he doesn't have anything left for these final rounds? I can't help but think that that's the case. Uh, this isn't the Curtis Bush we normally see in the ring here tonight. I think that he's weakened from losing that weight. I think it's a good decision for him to go up the weight class. I guess they'll call him the explosive medium-sized man instead of the close, explosive thin man, man. Nearing the end of round nine. One round to go. I think it's Melvin Murray's fight to lose at this point, Mike Sawyer. I think so. I think he's firmly in control. He could lose on points this last round and, by my estimation, still win this fight on decision. Curtis Bush has to be coming out for a knockdown here in the 10th round. This is from round nine. Again, Bush letting opportunities slip away. The double kick lands. Bush backs off. Let's Murray take the aggressive roll back. That's what Murray has done so well this entire fight. 
Well, Melvin Murray began this fight on adrenaline. The middle few rounds were on conditioning, and I'm sure now, with it in his grasp, this 10th round, not only conditioning, but he's got that adrenaline back. The final round for the vacant North American Super Welterweight title. Push again, just against the ropes, taking the punches. If his plan is to win by a knockout, he, he's not doing the things to make that happen. Melvin Murray can counteract a lot of the actions of Curtis Bush by just moving forward. And that seems to be what he's attempting to do. Bush turning left side forward, trying to land the left hook. Bush is left-handed. Although he, he fights southpaw most of the time, but we'll watch him switch when he wants to land the left hook. He'll switch left side forward. Right now, all he's doing is covering up. It's a little late for body punches also by Bush. Can't really understand this strategy, Lon. He should be giving it everything he's got in this last round, these last 45 seconds. Murray not slowing down at all. What a classy fighter. What a show of courage from Melvin Murray. Murray has been non-stop from the beginning of round one till the final bell here in the 10th. He does have good technique, but so does Curtis Bush. For Melvin Murray, his performance is coming out of the gym and out of the training that he has taken on as the 10 rounds are complete. Melvin Murray taking it to Curtis Bush, and as Murray goes back to his corner, his arm raised. He hopes in triumph. Curtis Bush, he's just a survivor at this point. As they wait the decision for this 10-rounder. And he will be here to present the belt to the winner in just a moment. Well, Melvin Murray fought a masterful fight. He just stayed on top of Curtis Bush from the opening bell, uh, and Bush completely stifled in his attempts to use that trademark spinning back kick and, and uh, straight left hand that have earned him knockouts in so many previous fights. from the judges in a majority decision. Quite a surprise, but congratulations.